Hello everyone, Zero Labs. Today is Thursday, September 25th, 2014, and this is a brief update from the lab. Quite a few of you have written me email to ask, hey Z, you haven't put out a, vi a video in quite some time, what's going on? Well, this video is, a, is an update on what's going on. <music> So quite a bit has been going on actually. Very little of it has been on camera yet, but uh, the Zucumbent Racer is done. Uh, I've been riding it quite frequently, as much as I can. And uh, so far, if you've been if you've been following any of my tweets, you've seen that I've had it up to 46.2 miles per hour. Not quite sure what that is in kilometers per hour, but I know it's a lot. So for those of you in Europe who want to convert that, uh, please feel free to do so. I think. Uh, I think it's a pretty a pretty big number, and um, a friend of mine that I work with has been gracious enough to loan me his Sony AS15 action cam, which, in my own estimation and his, in terms of picture quality and color saturation and and the the uh, parameters that really matter, blows the GoPro even the Black series out of the water really like the camera I uh, can't wait to do some video with it on the bike so I will be doing that um, one of the things that has taken up some of my time recently is I had to do repairs to some of the copper pipes in my home this is now after 11 years living here this is now the third time we have sprung a pinhole leak in our copper pipes um, what I ended up doing was a little bit of research online trying to figure out what's causing all of these pinhole leaks in my copper pipes and I find that there is a very small body of credible information regarding the cause behind pinhole leaks in copper pipes that are roughly 45, 50 years old. So um, after removing the section of pipe that had the leak actually the sections of pipe that had the leak I ended up doing a post-mortem on the section of pipe that actually had the pinhole in it and uh, discovered some very interesting information I will be doing a video on this as well to hopefully contribute to the overall body of knowledge that exists regarding the state of copper pipes in American homes these days um, I'll give you a hint, it's not pretty. I'm uh, still mining Bitquark very happily. Um, and I have also, uh, one more note on the Bitquark. Uh, I would like to announce that uh, the Bitquark developers have launched an official mining pool for those of you who do not have uh, mining rigs specifically for any cryptocurrencies that are little little difficult to build and somewhat costly you can also mine using just the CPU of your computers while your computers are idle there uh, there's been a problem in the past with pools coming and going that people are using in order to um, in order to mine cryptocurrencies well now there is an official pool created by the Bitquark developer that will stand for for as long as the coin remains and I'm sure it will remain for a very long time. The pool works very, very well. I've been mining there for several weeks. I encourage you to engage yourself in this discussion of cryptocurrencies and to get involved with mining something. There's a, there's a number of them out there that are uh, viable cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin and Litecoin. And uh, I encourage you to investigate and to learn a little as much as you can about cryptocurrencies. For those of you who mine Bitcoin, I just recently purchased a Antminer S1, like you see in the picture here. This is a dedicated ASIC miner, which uh, stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit, ASIC miner for the Bitcoin currency. Um, 
it's relatively mediocre in terms of some of the mining equipment that's out there, but it's enough to be in the game. And uh, those of you who do mine Bitcoin, who uh, have, have been mining at places in, in pools like um, Slush, Slush's pool, that seems to be one of the more popular ones. Uh, I also tried mining at a place called Triple Mining, and one of the things that I found while mining Bitcoin is that there is a period of time when uh, the what's called the round will come to an end, that the very big mining farms will swoop in and start mining at the end of each round for each of the mining pools that are out there. And what that does is it undercuts all of the other small miners who have been mining at the pool and d decreases the uh, amount of return that they earned over the period of time that they were there mining and it's unfair. I found a place where I have been mining called btcdig.com. I'm going to post a link in the description below but this is one of the best kept little secrets that needs to be made public. Uh, this is the fairest distribution pool I have ever found on the internet for mining Bitcoin. Once you mine a specific amount of Bitcoin, when the big when the big players come in at the end of a round, you don't see that number start to erode away. Okay, there's rewards at BTC Dig for loyalty, and that's something that you don't find very often online. So if you've never heard of BTC Dig and you mine Bitcoin, you really should take a look at it. Ustream has made a number of changes recently. Aren't they fun? I just love them. Uh, this is about the third time now that we have seen big changes to the chat system. And every time that they make the changes, they screw it up and piss everyone off. Well, you know what? I've had enough. So for those of you who like to join me on my live broadcasts, the live broadcast I'm now going to recommend, do not go to Ustream, because if you go to Ustream, you can see the video feed that I will send out. But if you try to engage in the chat room there, and I can't imagine why you would want to, you will be alone. Okay? I am not using the Ustream chat mechanism any longer. I have a very nice chat window that I have put up at altenergy.org. Again, I will post a link in the video description below. I encourage you, if you wish to watch my live Ustream broadcasts, please watch them from alt-nrg.org forward slash zero live, all one word, dot HTML. Again, the link will be below. There are pop-out windows for both the video feed and for the chat if you want to move them around on your screen so that, so that you can do other things on your computer without occupying all of the real estate on your screen. Uh, I've, I've put a lot of work into making it very user-friendly. So please join me on my Ustream live broadcasts. And when you do, please go to alt-energy.org. And if that's all you can remember, just remember to click the link to Zero Live in the left-hand navigation bar. Um, Mark Dancy recently sent me an email and in that email he was encouraging recipients to disseminate and participate in a crowdfunder for a video gaming controller uh, that he is particularly enthusiastic about. Unbeknownst to Mark Dancy, he apparently did not know what my stance was on video games in general and the detrimental effect I believe that first-person shooter games and things like that are having on our young children, desensitizing them to violence and things of that nature. Uh, I fired back an email to him and said, apparently you don't understand my position on the matter. Not only will I not help you, I will protest and I will petition against you on this particular matter. Now understand, Mark Dancy and I, we do not disagree on much. On this, we disagree. His response to me was, well, the world would be a pretty boring place if we all agreed on everything. 
So, uh, Mark, I respect your opinion. I know you have a vested interest in video gaming. I won't, uh, I won't expound on that any further. But I will tell you that if you are the recipient of one of Mark Dancy's email, I'm not even going to mention what the video game controller is called. I'm not going to draw any attention to it other than to say that I am opposed to it. Um, Russ Grease recently posted a video. He was having some fun with his some fun with nuts, so I decided that I would go ahead and have some fun with my nuts too. And uh, after I finish recording this video, I'm actually going to record a video of how we make this work. But it's pretty cool. These nuts are actually being held together by magnetic attraction. They have been held together like this for two days now. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how you do it. If you haven't seen Russ's video, I will link to that in the description below. It's really fun. Russ challenged me. He says, you know, Z, I know this, this is so simple that I, I know you're going to do it. I just know you're going to do it. And, of course, I had to do it. So, uh, yeah, this, this is a very cool little experiment. Uh, it... it faithfully demonstrates the Ed Lead Skalnin permanent magnet holder PMH and uh, it works pretty well. I like it. Lastly, uh, Russ has agreed to print up some gears for me for my next project. That's where this is all going. I've decided uh, that my next project will be to return to my roots and uh, start building another magnetic motor out of all permanent magnets, I, I have to tell you that this particular design literally caused me sleepless nights a couple of weeks ago. It, it, it gnawed at me so heavily. Uh, I would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. My mind would be racing from the information that I, that I had dreamt about, and uh, I just couldn't get it out of my head. So to get it out of my head, I have to build it. Um, it will be built out of clear acrylic, ABS plastic out of the gears for the gears that Russ is making for me, and permanent magnets. That's it. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll even win the $20 million X prize that's being offered. Uh, and again, I will post a link to that down below. So I think that's it. Uh, you know what I've done, what I've been working on, and where I'm going. I hope you'll enjoy the, uh, the, video, the, the videos I'm about to produce on the copper pipe, on the Z-Combent bike, on the uh, nuts, and uh, on the VFPMM, the Vortex Field Permanent Magnet Motor, which I describe on the front page of altenergy.org. That's all for now. Thank you all for watching. Please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And Peace, everyone.